Oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. May we live out this profound truth, mindful of the beauty, the hope, and the calling of living in you. Amen. Okay, so we're going to read Ten Commandments now. I'm not going to have you sing, but I will ask you something later in the sermon. So pay close attention to the Ten Commandments, okay? All right, so we're going to read from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not accept anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us, and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for your God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. And I see I read too far. Henry, who is a very elderly uh, man, was unhappy because he lost his favorite hat. Instead of buying a new one, he decided he would go to church and steal one out of the entrance porch where the worshipers were praying. When Henry arrived at church, an usher in intercepted him at the door and took him into a pew and he sat where he sat and listened to the entire sermon on the Ten Commandments. After the service, Henry met the vicar in the vestibule doorway and shook his hand vigorously and told him, I want to thank you, Father, for, that you, for saving my soul today. I came to church to steal a hat, and after hearing your sermon on the Ten Commandments, I decided against it. And the vicar answered, You mean that the commandment, you shall not steal? That changed your mind? No, retorted Henry. The one about adultery did. As soon as you said that, I remembered where I left my own hat. <laughs> How many of the Ten Commandments can you name? Ah, she asked that question again. We've heard them in the song. We just heard them in the scripture. Difficult to get them all, but we're going to give it a try. And we have a couple of pastors sitting in the pews this morning, so we'll be all right. All right, so we're going to just shout them out. It doesn't matter what order they're in, and I'm going to wait for your responses. So let's give it a shot. Remember the 
Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. And then I heard another one over here. Love your God. Love your God. The Lord your God. Thou shalt not steal. Do not steal. No items. Thou shalt not covet. No idols. False witness. False witness. Honor your parents. Honor your parents. Remember the Sabbath. Um, you already said that, thank you. <laughs> it's a very important one to remember. <laughs> Ten Commandments, 
right there, boom, is the golden calf. They made and they started worshiping. Chatting on Facebook, Nancy Harper told me she had done it. Never remembered the bit about Moses throwing down the tablets of anger and then breaking them. Those are the fun things that when we read scripture over and over again, we find these new little nuggets every time we read. There's something new there. But anyway, back to Nancy's comment about I just I just couldn't remember that. I really thought a lot about Moses throwing down the Ten Commandments and breaking them into pieces. And so my response was, I wonder if he swore when he did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was likely angry enough to uh, have said something unsavory himself. He's human too. What God knew and Moses discovered on that mountain was that people needed a list of mandates. Not as a simple point-by-point -point checklist so when you can get to heaven you can say, I never did this, and I never did this, and I never did this. But more importantly, as an ethical covenant, which was then and is to be now an act of worship. That's right. How we live our lives is, is an act of worship every moment of every day. God knows that in life, there's a whole lot of gray area. Try as we might, and as easy as it may seem, a list of rules like this, telling us black and white ways of living our lives, is not really what God thought we needed. Because God knows that life is not black and white. The world is much more complicated than that. God led the Hebrews out of this horrible oppression and slavery. He promised them a land overflowing with milk and honey. It was to be a blessed life, but a righteous life as well. Living out the Ten Commandments was, and is still about today, saying thank you to God by praising and worshiping us, not just on Sunday, but in everything we do, and in everything we are, and in everything we say. The Ten Commandments, they may seem easy, but what if they aren't easy? What if honoring your father is impossible to do as he abuses you? What about the soldier who has killed another soldier in battle? What about the person who lies to save or protect the life of another human being? Can you fault the homeless man or woman for coveting their neighbor's house? I'm working today. It's the Sabbath day. We can come up with what ifs for every one of the commandments. And God knows that living within the context of the commandments by themselves as separate entities is not that simple. Worshiping God is not about praising an old dude with white hair and suburban socks on his feet. God says worshiping and praising our Lord is living in right relationship with one another. What God is trying to do by giving us these ten decrees is stop and look around ourselves and realize the world does not revolve around us alone, but to realize that together we make up the kingdom. Together as a people who live fully and wholly at peace, hope, and love, and joy. These commandments about who we are together, not by ourselves. Later, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, God made these ten commandments much more simple when Jesus said in Matthew 22, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Everything hangs on those two commandments alone. In the spirit of the Memorial Weekend, I read a story of 
about a man named Francois Gautron, a European tour guide who specialized in tours for former soldiers who served in the European theater during World War II. Francois' story took place during a reunion of an American bomber squadron, which hired him to take them to sites connected with their war experience. One evening, Francois ended a long day of touring by taking the men to a local bar. The room already contained quite a few people when they entered, most of them men about the same age as the veterans. When Francois heard that they were speaking German, he guessed that they were veterans from the other side of the conflict. Conferring with the group's guide, he received confirmation of his surmise. Your guys drop bombs on my guys during the war, the other guy told them. This could get interesting. As the American vets entered the room, Francois watched with a bit of apprehension. It didn't take the Americans long to overhear the conversations in German and, and figure out who those men were. There was a period of awkwardness as, as the veterans found seats, and then finally one of the Americans went over to a table where some of the elderly Germans were sitting, everyone's holding their breath. He introduced him in, himself in German, and he struck up a conversation. <coughs> Soon another veteran did the same. After about 10 minutes, everybody in the room was talking to each other and sharing stories, Francois recalled. The Germans talked about what it was like to be young and scared, that the next bomb was going to land on them, and the Americans told them what it was like to be young and scared as they flew planes amid anti-aircraft fire. For two hours, they talked nonstop. And at the end of the evening, they exchanged addresses with each other. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them were still corresponding to this day. For those men, Americans and Germans alike, their war finally ended over glasses of beer in a French bar, more than 50 years after the armistice had been signed. God's hope and wish for all of us is to live in love with one another. These Ten Commandments, while seemingly simple rules to live by, are a tapestry of who we are to be with one another. These soldiers from opposing sides found it 50 years later after fighting against each other. The hope is that for the son or daughter to find reconciliation and healing with his or her father. Perhaps the homeless man will no longer covet his neighbor's house when he finds a home of his own to live in. Whatever the case may be, God gave Moses those commandments so long ago so that we could be a people living for and within the kingdom as one body, knowing and loving peace. Friends, may you find wholeness and peace as you live and worship with this wonderful gift that God has given us called the Ten Commandments. Let us pray. God of us all, thank you for giving us the Ten Commandments, evidence of your love for humanity. Help us to not just see them as a set of rules that are simply kept or broken, but a covenant with you and with our brothers and sisters to live within the kind of freedom from brokenness and oppression you have in mind for us. Bless us as we continually strive toward this goal, and when we fall short, are given encouragement to try and try again. In the name of the one who taught us to love you, by the way in which we love our neighbors. <clears throat>